Okay, and we should be live. Hi, I'm Mairi, I'm from Orkenspalter TV. Um, just today I'm guest hosting on Maschine TV. And with me is Raphael from Black Shamrock. Hi there, I'm Raphael, I'm the game designer for Paranoia. Yes, and we're going to bar uh, talk about Paranoia. Happiness is mandatory, and I'll have to ask you probably several times to get yeah, closer okay. to the microphone. That's better. Um, yes. And I think we're going to start off by showing the trailer, and then we're going to talk about the game, about the tabletop role player game that's been kind of um, the starter for this. Yep, sure. And um, we'll also be happy to take questions from the chat. Hello, chat. Hi there. Okay, yes, Frank Computer wants you to be happy. It's mandatory, as the game tells yes, you is. directly. So uh, let's talk a little bit about who's Black Shamrock and how did it happen that you do Paranoia? Yeah, Black Shamrock is a studio in Ireland, uh, and we are all about RPGs, to be honest. And we are good friends with the IP, IP, IP holders of Paranoia. And we basically decided that Paranoia would be really interesting to try and translate into a a computer game, especially because the mechanics in there are very unique. So we just decided to go like, okay, uh, this, you know, this sounds like a really good IP for us to, to try something new. Uh, and yes, as you can see in the game, it's, it's very different, it's very unique. Oh yes, this, the setting is very weird. And back when Paranoia came out, which is um, originally a tabletop RPG, so like classic role playing where you sit around a table and play with play with your friends, um, because it is meant to do, set you up against each other. It doesn't tell you up front, but it ends up mostly being yeah. friends shooting each other and and uh, betraying each other. But so let's talk. Let's talk a little bit about the setting first. We've seen a few impressions. Uh, of what it's like to live there in the Alpha Complex. What's the Alpha Complex? Yeah, Alpha Complex is this new place. Uh, basically, humanity uh, got destroyed. Uh, you're like the only survivors and you're living inside this complex, which is ruled by this AI, this overlord that sees uh, everything. It's everywhere. And all he wants is actually for everyone to be happy. And that's it. Uh, but the way that the computer tries to achieve this is by very weird ways, we can say it like that. So by trying to make the place utopia, you might discover that things are not really that great, things are not really that happy in this place. Yeah, and the characters you're going to, to be playing um, are going to be troubleshooters. What does it mean to be a troubleshooter for friend computer? Yeah, troubleshooters are basically citizens. Uh, it's, it's worth to know that basically everyone in Alpha Complex, like from the army or uh, troubleshooters or uh, VAT cleaners, everyone there is just a citizen, first of all. Uh, so Frank Computer basically uh, selects a few of the citizens to go and basically do some work for him. Uh, in this case, for the troubleshooters, the work is to actually go down, uh, go all over Alpha Complex 
and try to find uh, traders and shoot them, and that's it. So you're, you're literally shooting trouble, and trouble is usually exactly. people. It's very clear in the name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you decided to, to, to do it at a, as a tactical RPG, and it, it looks very, very classical RPG-like um, computer RPG. So you have um, basically an isometric view mm -hmm. of what's yep. happening. How, how did you arrive at this, at this look and feel for the game? Yeah, the game might feel like uh, almost like any CRPG with the isometric view, etc. We decided to go this way because we had to have a party with you. Uh, the, your team that's with you, it's very important. Uh, the, the, the original tabletop RPG is all about having people uh, always trying to be on top of each other. It's, all, it's, it's always about uh, how you try to not be the one to be executed at the end of the yeah. mission. So we had to have the team with you, and isometric is a good view. Uh, it's a good camera angle for you to have like multiple characters, especially when you have like uh, four characters or or and you're like trying to give orders for them. So yeah, that's pretty much why. How deep is going to be the tactical side of this? So do do you have to be be very much into tactical gameplay and and know my XComs and stuff like that, or is it going to be a little bit easier to? No, to not really. Uh, paranoia is way more chaotic yeah. in the sense. So the way that the the whole game unfolds is basically you're gonna see combat, uh, and as soon as combat becomes like really unbearable, really chaotic, uh, you can just active pause. You need to pause the game, and then you can give orders to your officers. So you have time to think and time away from the explosions everywhere and grenades flying, etc. So you can just stop, look at the situation and go like, okay, what should be the best option here? But you don't really need to be a very tactical person. It's all about uh, chaos and you can see that the accuracy of everyone in Alpha Complex is really bad because no <laughs> one there is actually uh, trained to shoot, they're just citizens. So yeah, we have this whole complex mess going on during combat. Mm. Okay, and um, the kind of characters that you're going to play is also going to be uh, slightly weird. So, so you're not, as you said, you're not going to play people who are actually trained to shoot, but you're going to play people who have different specialties, like people are there to disinfect yeah. things, mm -hmm. but you can use strong chemicals to do other things. I mean, let's a little, what kind of characters can we play apart from that? Yeah, Paranoia doesn't have a class system. It's more mm -hmm. like a role system. So certain officers are going to be assigned a duty. Uh, it can be the happiness officer, which emanates to make sure that everyone in the group is always happy. You also have the hygiene officer, which emanates to make sure that everyone is always clean and tidy, despite all the bloodshed going on mm -hmm. and all the explosions, etc. Uh, you're also going to have people like the combat officer, which is all about shooting people, he, he doesn't really care. Uh, or the loyalty officer, which is always trying to abide by the rules, which is something that the player is going to learn really early in the game. Uh, Frank Computer is going to give you uh, a mission for you to accomplish, but in order to finish that mission properly, you might need to commit treason. Uh, it's not like you can avoid it and be loyal 100% of the time, but it's all about, it's all about when do you commit a treason? It's all about like when exactly you take action or what exactly are you going to be doing based on the officers you have with you because let's say if you have the tech guy with you and you go and decide to hack a vending machine, the tech guy might actually note that and later in the debriefing of the mission the tech guy can just go and say, hey Frank Computer, I just saw this guy here and he was like messing around with vending machines and at the network of Alpha Complex and you might be in trouble. Okay, so a lot of small things are going to end up being traitorous. So, exactly. And you, ha you can't avoid them. So in, in, in the tabletop role-playing game, every character was played by a, a real person, mm -hmm. a human player, yep. of course, and then they started betraying each other at the table. So in this case, your team, the, the team that you have with the different officers, they are going to sna snitch about each other. And yeah, exactly. That's great. <laughs> so, Basically, yeah. the way that it, it unfolds is like, yeah, the, one of the first challenges when we decided to go with Paranoia was like, okay, so this is all about the interaction between the, the, the people that are playing the mm -hmm. game. So how are we going to be translating this into a single player experience? So the way that it works is you're going to have your officers with you. Uh, they are part of your team. You can give them orders. You can make them like attack uh, enemies, etc. But in the end, they do have their own agendas. Uh, mm -hmm. They're not there exactly to aid you and make you look better uh, or good in front of Frank Computer. No, they're first of all like they want their own goal to be accomplished. 
after that, of course, if the mission can be completed, fine. But they're always going for like their own agenda. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have a few discussions like during the missions with the officers. They might um, vanquish from your team during the mission, and you need to find them, or you need to do something to to convince them to do something uh, for you, or to come back, or to join you again. So they kind of like have this feeling with them mm -hmm. that they're like. They're alive. They have their own goals. They uh, and each one of the playable characters are actually have like a little arc of story that like unfolds whenever you pick that character and you have them with you in the missions. So yeah, they're they're interesting. And it's usually going, uh, you're going to go out with a four people team every time. How many characters roughly are there going to be that you can take along? Yeah, you can have four characters uh, per mission. One of them being you, mm -hmm. which is the team leader, and you can just choose three of the other officers. They all have their own uh, different inventory, they have their own skills, they have their own abilities, and of course they also have their own uh, infractions that are going to be most uh, paying attention. Mm -hmm. So let's say the loyalty officer, if you're trying to bribe someone, maybe the loyalty, loyalty officer is not the right officer to be there with you. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Mm. Are you, are you going to be able to, to also um, betray those people to friend computers? So can, can you in, have you, do you have the option to betray the NPCs? Yeah, at certain points you can uh, report them to friend okay. computer instead of you. Uh, or you can just go the easy route, which is basically they can turn on you if they're not there. Okay. So, yes, <laughs> if you know what I mean, yeah, that's you can, how you do it. You can, can very finally betray them. Oh, yeah, let's talk about um, how, what happens in paranoia when you die. Because it's mm -hmm. semi-perma-death or six times Yeah, death. basically in paranoia, each, uh, everyone has six clones. Yeah. Uh, and you can use those six clones. Uh, the new clone doesn't have, uh, it doesn't carry any of the scenes of the past clone. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you betray everyone, if you're like uh, with really high trees on, etc., you can just die, and the new one, uh, the new you, is not gonna have like any of those things with it. With it. Uh, whenever you die, you're also able to respec your your abilities. So let's say you die during a mission where combat was really heavy, you can just after cloning respec everything on combat, for example, and you can like overcome the challenge. There is also mutations, which is by law. According to Fan Computer, they don't actually exist. Yeah. But sometimes clones come with mutations, uh, and whenever you reclone, you might have a new and different mutation as well. So it's death here is not exactly a bad thing for uh, for you to happen. You can use death as a resource for you to to progress in the game. Okay, and but you're limited to the six clones as a tabletop game, and then it's definitely or what's going to happen if you actually have yeah, your seven clones? You're lines. limited to six clones officially. Officially. But there might be one or two guys in the dark corner selling you extra clones for some ah. illegal currency, but I didn't, I didn't say that. Yeah, no, of course you didn't because no. friend yeah. computer is watching. Exactly. Oh yeah, I, I noticed that it's literally watching in the game. You have the, 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 the tiny logo, friend computer, yeah. and it actually watches you. Exactly, as long as you're, like, you're moving the mouse and the AI is always like, reminding you that like, you're under surveillance all the time. Who in your team came up with that idea? It's just a, oh. such a neat little thing. It's a, it's a really old idea. Like, I believe it was one of the first things that we introduced to the game. We were like, oh, it would be really cool if this was actually <laughs> following you. And we even come up with the idea at, for, at some point that was like, and if you try to poke it, you should get an infraction or something because what, what, are, what are you doing? Uh, but I, I'm not 100% sure if that's still in the game. But yeah, that was one of the ideas. Okay, I, I, I like that they can play around actually with the, with the um, and Oh yeah, there are different versions of the tabletop game Paranoia and they kind of differ a little bit in, in, in what kind of technology is there because mm -hmm. it was originally from the 80s, early 90s yes. I think. Um, but the recent edition has technology that's more like our today. So what did you decide on what that world looks like? Uh, most of the weapons, they are, I believe that it's from the XP version, which is the most recent one. Mm -hmm. uh, everything like from narrative to the environment, etc. We try to kind of like, with the IP owner's blessing, of course, we try to make it more up to date. Mm -hmm. So people from now can relate more about that. Uh, can relate more with the game. It's because mainly in the 80s it was all about uh, communism and uh, Cold War, etc. And all of this, like people were not really seeing the future as like a really bright place, etc. So some of those aspects are in the game, some of them we change it like to match the reality that we are living in right now. 
Uh, but there might be surprises during the game for people that really enjoy the, the yeah. first versions of the game. We can't say anything about it. Production pro forbidden me. But yeah, it's definitely... But you couldn't help yourself to put some Easter eggs in there. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, you this didn't is, say this that. This is actually the <laughs> perfect game for this kind of situation. Oh, yes, of course, because it, it is all a game about things are hidden and people are not allowed to talk about that, and, but you're <laughs> still going to find them. And, yeah, you, you, you mentioned that you had um, that, that everything is kind, kind of... Um, ha has been allowed and you talk with the, with the people who made Paranoia and things like that. Has there been a back and forth? Have they been involved in any kind? Yeah, sure. Well, one of the writers, Gareth, that mm -hmm. was involved with the, the whole Paranoia universe, he was always with us. He wrote uh, a lot of the dialogues we have in the game. We had other writers as well, Barry, Ryan, etc. They were like really out together into this, like really trying to make this universe feel unique and feel weird after all. Mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna see a lot of references all over the place um, to pop culture, most of all. Um, but yeah, narrative is something else there, like, especially because when you're dealing with Frank Computer and you're dealing inside Alpha Complex, uh, what you say can actually have deadly consequences. So you do need to play their own game, you need to understand the rules there and actually play accordingly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you choose the wrong answer to a friend computer or the wrong wrong option mm -hmm. in, in some dialogue, things can go. Yes, badly, you really can quick. go from just receiving a small amount of treason to you're just going to be incinerated right there. Oh yeah, you can build up treason. It's yes. not like um, you you do one infraction and it's done. So you, so you can watch how you progress with treason. How what's that going to look like? What's the yeah, system treason, going to be like? Yeah, uh, treason. When you look at the UI uh, right next to the UI of Frank Computer, you're gonna see on the left that there is a treason meter there, <laughs> and there's also a status which basically dictates how trustful you are to Frank Computer. Like how much Frank Computer trusts you. Mm -hmm. uh, and there, as it goes up it goes up and up and up, you're gonna see you're going from suspicious to like highly suspicious or even traitor. And as soon as you reach the traitor status, uh, you're now hunted by by everyone on Alpha Complex. So when treason, the treason level reaches 100%, you're gonna have this moment where Frank Computer is gonna allow you to use a termination booth by yourself mm. and kill yourself and get a new clone. Uh, and if you don't do that, we're just gonna like spawn wind sack all over the place, and yes, you're gonna die. <laughs> yes, that's part of the game. Um, okay, I also wanted to talk about because we already started a little bit in on it about the writing and about about the humor. Paranoia was was always known for the very dark humor and um, about the <laughs> twisted things. And uh, did the writers just kind of do this on their own and see themselves away? Or was the rest of the team kind of, I have this idea, I want to bring something in? No, yeah, it was really fun because we had like moments where pretty much we would be like, guys, we have this new secret society that we need ideas for. And everyone would be like, oh, we could be you doing this or we could be doing that. And we would be like, yeah, that those are like really interesting ideas. And we would be like taking notes on everything. And later when we were actually developing the thing, it would be like, oh yeah, what about this guy, the, this idea here, guys, what do you think? And people would be like, voting for stuff to be there uh, so yeah that was a good way of actually achieving a way uh, achieving uh, a more a game that could impact more people because if it's just like one or two people uh, trying to come up with an idea maybe it's gonna go right maybe it's gonna go wrong mm. but if you have like a wider var variety of people like the whole team playing with it then it's very different mm. okay how big is Black Shamrock again? Uh, it's not really a big studio we are about 60 Roughly, people right now. Yeah, that's the size where this approach probably works best. Yeah, you, maybe, could be. <laughs> maybe, hopefully. <laughs> it, it looks good so far. So the the, the demo um, mission and things people have already been able to look at. Mm -hmm. So far, um, there's. I I love the idea that you usually you start investigating something that's pretty innocuous, like here's a cleaning robot. Robert, it doesn't mm -hmm. work anymore. And then it turns out that there are people LARPing. And exactly. <laughs> that was the first thing I, exactly. I had to Exactly. Like, this is the first mission in the game. And it's all about, like, your mission is just to go down there in the basement and investigate what's mm. going on. And then when you reach that place, you're going to see cardboard orcs. And you're going to see, like, people turning turrets into dragons. And, but for people in Alpha Complex, they don't really know what exactly those things are. So they're just like, okay... Traitors are just messing around here, like they're just making a mess, and the hygiene officer goes crazy with it because he's like, "There's infractions everywhere, and there's like BBB all over the floor, and etc." 
and uh, the bots just trying to clean everything. But since R&D had this great, amazing idea of just introducing a fear simulator to the bot, mm -hmm. uh, whenever there's conflict, the bot just freezes and you need to clear all the, uh, all the enemies on the mission, mm -hmm. like on, on that room for the bot to progress and keep doing and keep unlocking the doors for you, etc. Uh, only for you to at the end just discover that like remember when you said about like all the pop culture uh, mm -hmm. references that we would have in this game uh, yeah basically at the end you can find one guy which is part of the fellowship sounds familiar but yeah, yeah it's not that one it's a different one <laughs> it's a different one and basically the guys of the, of the fellowship their, their main goal is to see the outside they want to see this new DLC expansion that's how they call it which is basically full of new monsters and the ceiling is blue and the, the floor is green and they really want to go out there and they want to overthrow, overthrow this like all-seeing eye mm -hmm. that's like lurking in Alpha Complex. Uh, it's a completely new idea, of course. No mm, one ever Yes, meta humor has exactly. never happened. Exactly, no. Uh, so yeah, this is the kind of stuff you, will be, uh, you can be expecting from this game. It's just weirdness like from start to end. Mm. Yeah, you, you said pop culture references and things like that, but you very very specific references also because of that mission you also have someone who rigged bot to to shout lightning bolt <laughs> yeah. when they attack, which is a meme kind of the LARPing scene. So exactly, <laughs> are you into all this stuff? You said your tabletop gaming is important to you, so is there wider interest in everything that's role playing? Yeah, we did like a lot of research on what exactly we could be including in the game, and it's just like. If it's fun, if people know about it, uh, we do have the internet now, which is just spreading everything. Yes. <laughs> so this is something that we use. We even have an uh, alpha book inside the game, which is like your own social media where you could be posting stuff. Uh, hopefully things that are not treasonous because Frank Computer, of course, is hopefully. also there. It's always watching. Uh, so yeah, we do have a lot of like different uh, references all over the, all over the place. Mm. Oh, and you also already mentioned working on secret societies. And that was a question I also have, because in the tabletop game, usually every player chooses, has a secret society that they are part of. So you actually are a traitor, no, no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. So will, will you choose secret societies in the game, or are they going to be background? We do have a few secret societies in the game. You might decide to join them or not. Uh, mm -hmm. And depending on what you do, uh, you're going to have uh, extra side quests to, to, a code to do with them. Uh, there's also endings that are linked to the secret societies. So depending on what secret society you decided to go with, uh, you're going to have a different ending, for example. Oh. And if you don't have a secret society, well, something might also happen. Different endings. That sounds that sounds ominous and very interesting. So, um, how how long is this story going to be? And obviously, we're going to have different endings depending on your choices. Yeah, the story is gonna take you roughly 15 hours to complete, uh, and the different endings is based basically on the secret societies you decided to to be part of, and your own personal decisions. There's also uh, one secret ending that you need to do something in th through the game, like through the story, in a very specific moment. That if you do that, it's gonna allow you to to use a certain thing at the end. That sounds that sounds very interesting. Yeah. I, I know some people who are going to play this game again and again to see all those different endings. Um, yeah, when 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 is it going to come out, and what platforms are we going to see it on? Yeah, the game is going to come out on the third of October for PC, and it's also going to be available for PS4 and Xbox One, but we don't have the date yet. Okay, but soonish. Soon, yes, exactly. Soonish, still. Uh, this hopefully next week or the two week, weeks after this one, uh, we're going to be announcing the, the date for the console as well. Okay. Um, what space should people watch if they want to have news about that when it comes out and what happens? Uh, we do have a official Facebook page that people can go there. There's also a Twitter. Uh, the Facebook page is actually really great because the community is also like, they're just there. And whenever there is a new post, etc., people are going to be like uh, accusing the other people <laughs> on the comments of being traitors. Uh, and the page actually interacts, like we can actually see the page responding as Frank yeah. computer, so it's really cool. Mm. So yeah, I can imagine that the community building, built around that game is going to be full of in-jokes and, and full of playing around the tropes of the game, <laughs> so... Yes. Mm. So you already have people who are kind of leading the community and... Yeah, we do have people like just interacting with everyone. Uh, and the posts are just great, like we had a 
uh, contest for people to actually come up with like a poster that would be approved by Frank Computer. <laughs> and we had like some really great ideas that came out of like the community. So yeah, it's actually really great to have a community like this with this game. Did, did, did any of those posters actually get signed off by Frank Computer or were they all traitors? I believe that one or two actually they managed to get alive, yes. Mm -hmm. no. uh, Good for them. <laughs> one yes. of the few. Other, <laughs> other ones probably still had clones somewhere out there. Um, yeah, right. Uh, and it's going to be single player or is there any kind of multiplayer option? No, it's a single player, it's single player, game, player yes. game. Just straight away. Yes. Um, so, um, if there's, so, are there any more questions from the stream, from the chat for Raphael? Otherwise, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, role-playing background generally and uh, kind of what was, how did you get into the whole thing, both tabletop role-playing and being in the business? Mm -hmm. The questions, I guess? That was, yes, that was the question, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> how did it start out for you, being part both of, of tabletop role-playing and, of course, of PC role-playing? Uh, yeah, I do have like I do really enjoy RPGs in general. Uh, Paranoia, the first time I, I didn't know the game when I actually joined the studio, uh, mm -hmm. so it was a surprise when I started like looking at the craziness and everything that was going on. And I was like, how are we managing to do this? Like I was just looking as a game designer, yeah. I was like just looking at the mechanics mostly and going like, but the mechanics are weird. Like yes, <laughs> people, like we don't have level, we don't have XP uh, when. Uh, when you kill creatures, like usually in a classic RPG, you would be expecting uh, a reward or something like mm -hmm. that. Uh, in this game, when the mission's over, we just take everything from you. Like everything you just acquired during the mission is gone, unless you have like ways of dealing with it and like kind of like sneaking stuff for the next Ooh. mission. So yeah, it's all about like managing your 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 inventory as well, like managing the space you have. So maybe you had like this, you received this really cool weapon in one mission. And you really would like to keep that, uh, yeah. You might be able to just like sneak one or two weapons without R and D knowing. So, yeah, it's it's, it's good. Uh, and paranoia is not exactly known for 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 being um, a crunchy simulation of of fights or something like that. So I guess everything that's going on when you enter tactical combat, that's scratch build, that's your stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's that's true. Uh, we even decided like to to go with a more uh, cartoonish uh, approach mm -hmm. to the game as well because when we were like looking at the, the stuff that we would be doing uh, we were like okay if this has like some realistic graphics or something like that this is going to be the goriest game ever because yes. it's just like explosions and you have lanes etc so we had to turn down everything and go mm -hmm. like okay maybe a cartoonish especially because it's a, a humor game in the end it's a it's a dark humor very dark but yes, <laughs> yes but it is a humor game so we wouldn't we wouldn't like to see people just going like okay yeah i'm just seeing blood and like uh, limbs going everywhere, so we decided to go for a more cartoonist uh, art as well, just like okay. to, to do that. Mm. Then, thank you so much for joining us here, for thank talking you. about Paranoia, um, and as you heard, if you want to know more about the game, look it up at, fa at Facebook, and uh, don't, don't worry if you're called a traitor, you will have several lives to spend. <laughs> and everything will be fine, and everyone will be happy. <laughs> so, I'm very... You can't see this in the stream, but there was suddenly a murderer outside my window here. <laughs> because we're in the cosplay village on Gamescom. Thanks to, to um, Machine TV and the cosplay village for allowing us to spend a little time in this aquarium being looked at by people and mass murderers and serial killers <laughs> with masks and knives. Really Thank nice. you, Raphael. Thank you. It was awesome. I'm totally looking forward to this, and I know a lot of people who will also be yeah. very much into this. See you all in October for the game. Yeah. See ya. Goodbye, everyone.